would you please get me the backstage number at the ho Operator, would you please get me the backstage number at the Hollywood Tonight Show, my agent Arthur Davis? You know, you really can help keep your phone costs down just by looking up the number in your directory. I don't have one. I am in a limousine. Oh, save it. Go ahead, please. Arthur, now, back to more of Hollywood so Tonight with Regis Philbin and today's guests, Tommy Bonner and Lily yeah, Tomlin. I know. I know. Okay, I'll meet you out front. Okay, bye-bye. We're talking with Tommy Bonner, who, along with Lily Tomlin, will be receiving a star on Hollywood's coveted Walk of Stardom right here in just a few minutes on our show. Lily will be putting her hands and feet in the concrete, as uh, Tommy has already done. She better hurry, Regis. I mean, it's quick drying cement. <laughs> Did I step in it or what? <laughs> Too much, man. Too much. <laughs> well, Tommy, let's talk about your new special, Tommy Velour's America. I understand you brought along a clip. In this clip, I'm singing to a chick I consider to be the all-American girl. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Sounds good. All right. Watch the monitors. Here's a clip from Tommy Phil Velour's was so late. America. My country, tis of me. Hip land of liberty, of thee I see. Liberty, my all-American girl. Ho, I got a sunshine on a cloudy day. I got the month of she come, she come. Oh. of May. Hey, I, guess. I can't. This, I can't believe this guy. He can't be serious. Tommy, Tommy really. Way, my girl, your girl. Why does he? A wonderful world in the world. Yeah, Tommy. If I ruled the world, ladies and gentlemen, I'd rule it the way I rule my girls, with a strong, firm hand. Let them know who's boss. Yeah, Tommy. Chicks respect you for that, and so would the world. Well, he just goes if too far. Phil, we've only got six got minutes. Oh, well, if I rule the world, too. Phil, are we almost there? Come on, it's so late. Run. Can't you hang around a few more minutes? I gotta go, Regis. Honestly, man, I gotta go. It's been great. Hate to miss Lily, but I gotta run. Hey, hey. so long, everybody. Go for it. Tommy Floor. Well, my next guest is currently writing, producing, directing, editing, and starring in her latest film, The Seven Ages of Woman, the movie. Come here. Here, ladies and gentlemen, at last, she made it. Go, Lily go. Tomlin. And down here on this darn corner, I don't, if, I don't know who's in charge of this district, but someone should put a stop sign on that corner. We've needed one for years, but uh, Lily, Lily, can we get on with the ceremony? Uh, yeah, I just want, I can't let this go by, Regis. I hate it when performers come on TV and get political, but I've got to say this. Yeah. Tommy Valore, if you are out there watching, I mean, using the Statue of Liberty as a sex object, I mean, you're the one who should stop it. Am I right? I mean, I, I hate, if you ruled the world, I'd hate to think what you'd get us into. Whoops. Oh, oh, Lily, no. Lily, and if you ruled the world, what would you get us into? Well, you'd be darn sure that I'd put a stop sign down there on that corner. I'd do that much, at least. <laughs> wait, Regis, stop. Lily, wait, wait a minute. No, you're at my skirt. They, I could be on oh, Regis. These were new boots. <laughs>
Tomlin puts a stop to accidents at dangerous intersections. Lily puts best foot forward. You must have some kind of charisma or something. And I can't see it. You don't have to see it to use it. Good morning, people. I want you to remember in this scene now what it was like for us in the 50s, as painful as that is. Getting acne, days your hair turned out pukey, the double standard. I want the exuberance of adolescence. Yes, I do. But also, please, give me the underlying pain. All right, enough, Sandra. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everybody ready? Lights, camera. Slate it. Seven ages of women, adolescence, take one. Cue music, action. Of course, it's so much better when you're limbo in the sand. She's so loose and she's so limbo with her arms and legs akimbo. How I love to watch her limbo. There's nothing better, of course, unless she Maybe she's easy. I'd do anything to get her <gasps> to <remember. laughs> My <Get> reputation. <laughs> I've got a bad rep. Turn it, that's a take. New setup. Thanks, Jenny. Oh, you have got all the earmarks of another war invading. Oh, Maggie. This is going to be some movie, kid. Everything but the kitchen sink. Ah, it's not from here to eternity, but it works. I don't think... Uh, I'm speechless. Some hot coffee. <sighs> oh, Arthur, that limbo almost killed me. Oh, I know. I don't know how we used to do it night after night. Uh, little those men insist upon seeing you. I've got to look at the birth segment. Okay, would you wait in the dressing room? Thanks very much. Uh, Lil, this is not me talking. This is the studio. They viewed the birth segment, and it's not what they expected. Me either, Arthur. That's why I recut it. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh, Watch. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Peters. It's a girl. Ah, oh, gee, Nurse Hawkins. I really wanted a son. <sighs> well, this is not me talking. It's the studio. Are you still planning for this to be funny? It's supposed to represent false hope, Arthur, unconscious sexism. Then you're not planning for it to be funny. No, I think she's totally inexperienced. Of course. That way, we'll be able to call all the shots. We'll have this district right in the palms of our hands. Look, she has appeal, visibility, access to the press, and she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. <laughs> she has all the necessary prerequisites of a good politician. I know just oh, how to the scene. I'm Sid Cogan, and this is Ty Brown. So good to meet you, Lou. We're you? with Mega Mass Media Inc. Yes, and we've heard a lot of talk about you getting into politics. Just talk. Yeah, exactly, just talk. More than talk, I'd say. Look, Lily, we did an overnight poll. Quite impressive, hmm? <sighs> yes, Excuse we're prepared me. to back you as a third-party candidate for city council. Now, we got the clout, and we got the power base in order to make it happen. Now, if that doesn't persuade you, how's about this? Thanks to you, a stop sign on a corner where they had 20 accidents a month. I can't believe this. Hmm. Well, look, thank no, you, no, really, no, fellas, but no, fellas, no thanks. No, 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 she's a filmmaker. You can say no to us, but can she say no to them? Them? The people, Lily. Your people. Her people expect her to make a movie. Well, you think about it. We'll be in touch. I, I wouldn't expect to win, Arthur, but maybe I could be useful in getting the issues aired. My people. Extra, extra, read all about it. Will Tomlin run? Extra, extra. It looks as though Lily Tomlin is off the star trip and is now on the political bandwagon, which has led to trouble on the set of her latest magnum opus, The Seven Ages of Woman. I made the right decision. Come in. Arthur. I got a surprise for you. I got a surprise for you, too. Not me first. You're crazy enough to run. I'm crazy enough to help you. Oh, oh, ah, I knew ah, you would. I knew you would. Besides, the trouble we got with the studio, we could use another career in our back pockets. Uh, Kidding. Now, I wonder what Tempest Center City Council is. Oh, no, Arthur. Listen, 
Kogan and Ty said you need endorsements. I got some biggies. Sit, sit. You're not going to believe this. Really? I can't believe it myself. Look. I really, knew I could count, count on you. Uh, understands the plight of the factory worker, especially those out of work. Oh. You don't have to work in a brewery to know what's brewing in the country. I am so touched. Here. Here's to you, Lil. I like a good head on my beer, and I like a good head on my leader. Oh. I'm sorry. I've never done anything like this before. Oh. I'm not very political. Jane? And my boss, he really hates it when these show business types run for office. Oh, oh but gosh, when it comes to voting, I don't think I should be dictated to. And I know in my heart that Lily Tomlin is going to be on the job all the time, night and day. Oh. Not just... Not just nine to five. Great. Now my surprise. I'm not running for city council, Arthur. I'm running for Congress. I already told the press. The press? Yeah. No, you can't jump races like that, can you? Lots of candidates do it. Believe me, Arthur, if I'm ever going to be able to do anything about the Trilateral Commission or world peace, world hunger, Arthur, I've got to have all the visibility I can get. Right. Hey, Lillian Tomlinson! Boy, do I love politics. Look how many people I got to sign this partition. Oh, good work, Ted. And they call me crazy. You're not voting for Miss Tomlin? Well, let me play you a little conversation I taped between you and... Tom, that the money has been siphoned off. It's Do you recognize that voice? Bank account numbers. The bank accounts start with numbers. I thought you'd see it my way. See you at the polls, and thanks so much. Ernestine, Ernestine, you can't do that. I just did it, not only that, it worked. Well, there's no room for corrupt tactics in my campaign. Just remember what Adelaide Stevenson said. You lose ground when you sling mud. Rookie. Stevenson lost. Lily's campaign style is colorful, if not elevated. She's not only thrown her hat into the ring, but her dignity as well. She may be ahead in the polls, but she's behind in the movie. It seems she's changing the film as fast as she changes the offices she's running for. First city council, now Congress we hear. What next? Round and round she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. She is expected to declare some kind of candidacy at tomorrow night, night's big fundraiser. With her political star on the ascendant, there appears to be no stopping Tomlin now. You created a monster. Looks as though she may have a case of... What she needs is a charisma bypass. Now, a look at the campaign so far. Hello. L.A. Hog in here. Look, uh, you can't jump races. <laughs> That's not the way we had it planned. <laughs> like either you do it our way or you don't do it. Lily, Lily, Lily! Are we lucky or what? Oh, I love that guy. Nobody should vote for me after what I did today. Lil, why don't you just get out of that wet hula skirt? As someone who knows team. a lot about serving, I think she will serve us well. I think she will cut it so we all get a piece of the American pie. Maggie, I'm <laughs> so confused. I bet this is the first time you ever got a tip for a waitress, huh? Who said it was gonna be easy? And now... Night Maybe it's easier to sit on the sidelines and complain. Maybe it's easier to play a leading role in a movie than it is to take a leading part in making this country great again. But I never knew you to take the easy way out. But there's so much to learn, so much to do. What do I know? Well, I'll take a politician who's worried she doesn't know enough over one who thinks he knows it all any time. Now it's late. You get some shut eye sugar. Mm. Okay. Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. And the day after that's gonna be even longer. Because you know what? I think somehow you're gonna make the Senate. Now, let's kick off this fundraiser with the Stop It Party marching band. Everybody march. Well, great, now, great I like a sure bet, and I've got a hunch Lily will deal us all a winning hand. 
Unlike some politicians, she seems to be playing with a full deck. So come election day, I'm placing my bet in the voting booth. Lily's a real maverick, and I like that. The Bree City oh. was an unpaid political announcement. You can ignore me all you want, but I call the shots here. So just watch it. This is all coming to one, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, the Messiah of Love, Mr. Purvis Hawkins. Let me hear you say. Say it for your main I'm not saying songs tonight about what it'd be like if we was lovers. I'm singing about us loving one another. Like we were sisters and like we was brothers. The world today sure makes Purvis nervous. But whenever I feel my teeth on edge, I recall that song by Sister Sledge. We are family. Each of us a twig dig on the family tree. Well, let me hear you say we. to care less about our stereo systems, more about our political systems. Listen less to our earphones, more to the voice within that says we care. That offshore pollution is messing with the sea. Ain't no solution. the Lily Tomlin Stop It Party fundraiser. Oh, Maggie, the movie just isn't saying what I want it to say anymore. I'm thinking of calling it Seven Ages of Humanity or Seven Ages of Consciousness. What do you think? I think humanity I could dress, but consciousness, I'm no Edith Head, you know. <laughs> mm. Uh-oh. Mr. Colgan, hi. Um... Don't take any wooden nickels, kid. You can't double-cross us like this. 
And now, make way for the brand new waivers, Agnes Angst and the Manic Depressives, doing their never to be released National Tantrum. We're down to our last dollar bill, our drug is going to refill. Our doctor said what's made us ill is not expressing what we feel. He said, I see hostility is what you're all about. So take your rage upon the stage and let your anger out. I'm angry at machines that think they're so damn smart. I'm angry at pop culture and I'm angrier at art. I'm angry at Plato and I'm angry at Sartre. I think that for I am and so I'm angry at Descartes. I'm angry at the waiters who won't give me a table. I'm angry at the networks and I'm angrier at cable. I'm angry at sitcoms. I'm fed up with sports. I'm mad at the criminals. I'm mad at the courts. Let your anger out. Let your anger out. Let your anger out. Let your I'm angry at Hollywood for making all those stars. I'm angry at the world and at Mercury and Mars. I'm angry at Pac-Man for wasting all my time. I'm angry at myself, angry all the time. And this may shock some people I know. I never even saw the Rocky Horror Show. Let your anger out. Let your anger out. Let your anger out. Don't you come out to me. You're making me very tender. You're back to college press So angry at my fellow man I cannot find the words Angry at us all Because we're all a bunch of nerds Angry at the game of life There's no one that can win it Angry at the Congress I'm angry at the Senate A Angry at ecology, I'm angry at the pigeons, angry at designers, what they make us wear. Angry at the dog face who did this to my hair. In case you haven't noticed, I'm getting madder by the minute. yourself this time. There ain't no vacancy in the Senate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of peace, serenity, and America in the 60s, Holly Oneness, reuniting with her friends Chris Hillman and Herb Peterson. is headed in the wrong direction with the help of my friends here's a song
Explanation. Tomlin victorious. Crowd storms Detroit birthplace. Swept a victory by her stop at campaign, Lily Tomlin today moved into the White House. Celebrations were held across the country as Tomlin vowed to govern to the best of her ability. Each of these uh, parade units, as we've said, have been divided into different groups. I believe that this is the general of the army. He is the grand marshal. The inaugural parade. Five-star general. <laughs> I'll give you all one guess as to what unit that is. You can't see them, but you don't have to. The president's own, the United States Marine Band. The president likes horses, and there are horses and horses and horses in this parade. It's all kind of overwhelming, isn't it, Barbara? The music, the one band kind of bleeding into the next. In a stunning move, she filled the new post of Secretary of the Future with the youngest person ever to hold such high office, five-and-a-half-year-old Edith Ann. Lily refused to ride in the traditional presidential limousine, choosing instead to ride with newly appointed consumer advisor Judith Beasley in her, in her economy car. Proof positive she's not talking liberal while eating caviar. At this moment, the presidential convoy has reached the White House. This could be Lily's best role yet, and she's expected to play it to the hilt. She has promised that her first act as president will be a dramatic show of compassion for the world. As God is my witness, no one in the world will ever go hungry again. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a country to run. So tell me, did you guys see Red? Just a we second. Doing? A gracious hello, White House. Tippy Canoe and Tom one too. Oh, hi, Phoenicia. Oh, we're having a wonderful day at the White House. Just a second. Be careful with that poster. I brought over some personal items to perk up the place. Edith Ann, it's time for your nap. Just a second. I've got to run, Phoenicia. I want paper napkins, paper towels, and tissue, all in biodegradable white. That designer stuff clogs up our sewage systems. L Just a second. Well, Edith, don't you play under the president's desk. Else. There are important papers in here. Okay, I want that delivered. You can't miss it. It's the big White House on the corner. Bye-bye. Hey! Out, 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 out. Okay, out, I got him, Mrs. P. Edith, out, don't out. worry. Come on, Edith. Let's go out in the yard and have some. Fun. Good morning, Tess. Good morning, Edith. Good morning, Madam President. Here's your messages. I already screened out the dirty ones. Thank you, Ernestine. Good morning, Judith. Good morning. Wipe your feet, Madam President. Look at this office. Oh, Judith, thank you for cleaning up. Well, I dread it, but I've got to tackle those White House steps. Oh, Judith, 
I want to put a three by five card file right here so I can keep track of everything people write to me and call me about. Well, I'd advise you to use pale green or pale blue. Those white cards can cause severe eye strain and even nausea. If you don't care for lemon, I can give you floral or spice. I'll wrench these pesticides. Thank you. The video phone hotline's all set up. I warn you, you're not going to get a minute's peace. What about my hotline to the people? Arthur, I want to be able to communicate via satellite to the world at any moment. Voila. My fellow Americans, I hope you don't mind me popping in like this. I just wanted you to know that I'm thinking of you, and I plan to start solving our problems just as soon as I get unpacked. This is Arthur Davis, my presidential advisor. Yeah. Now back to whatever it is you were watching. Bye-bye. Okay. It works, Arthur. Well, of course. Ah, oh, yes, Edith. Lady, can you hear me? Yes. Lady, if the pizza man comes, would you send him into my office, please? And then, Madam President, I have some important papers I have to go over with you. Oh, later, Edith. I'm busy right now. I've got a million things to do. Lady, thanks are caving in on me. The future's going to be here before we know it, and I do not want to be to blame. I know, I know, and the problems of the future come second only to those of the present. We'll talk about it later, honey. Hi, you're on with the president. What? Is that you? It's me. Oh, I thought that was your secretary or something. No, no, it's well, me. Wait one minute, I gotta catch my breath here. I'm so excited. Kids, I'm excited. on. She's on. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see now. Uh, I'm Beth Barber. I'm, I'm Mrs. Beth Barber. I'm Bobby Barber's wife. Yes. And, uh, well, I, I first of all wanted to wish you a lot of luck. At... Is nice. something on fire in there? I'm sorry. Uh, and I wanted to know if you're going to reinstate free lunches in schools. Oh, I've already done that, Mrs. Barber. It's my new federalism. Uh, I'm feeding anyone who needs feeding. That's wonderful. Why, Thank you, thank you You're very welcome. much. I'm just real sorry I didn't vote for you. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Free lunches, where'd you get the money? Simple, I used the White House entertainment budget. Come here, I want to show you the changes I made in the birth segment. Oh, well, it can only get better. Ernestine, hold my calls. Right here. Congratulations, Mr. Peters. It's a human being. Listen to this. Aw, oh, gee, I'm so glad, Nurse Hawkins. It's just what I wanted. What'd you think? Do you think it would be better if I had him say, congratulations, Mr. Peters, it's a being that's human. Is that better? I think you got a lip sync problem there, Wyatt. Would, would you get that for me, Arthur? Sure. Oh, gee. Knack, knack! Who's there? Ayatollah. <gasps> Ayatollah. Ayatollah who? Ayatollah, you want him. Now I'm going to tell you again. Out of my way, bub. For heaven's sakes, what are you doing here? Lily made me White House chief of staff. I got stuff to go over. Good morning, Tess. Half of the morning to you, Madam President. The muck starts here. Let's see. Here's your foreign policy stuff. This oh, is stuff you, you can stuff. Here's your domestic crisis oh, stuff. You this here. is your congressional record yeah. stuff. Oh, have you heard this one? Hey, hey, look at this. When all this stuff is done, happy hour at the White House. Tell Tess a big box of stuff just arrived. I've never been so contented. Uh, Madam President, General Helot is on the phone from the Pentagon. Shall I just tell him you're out? Oh. Ernestine, I told you I am in for everyone and don't ever lie for me. Oh, grow up. What was that you said? I said he's about to show up on your monitor. Mm. Did you get my memo? I wasn't brief, General. What is this, um... This, uh, plutonium plan. That's our plan, to sell more plutonium. Isn't that the most dangerous substance in the world? <laughs> That's putting it mildly. And you want to sell it? If we don't sell it, other countries will. We don't want to lose out. Did you, uh, read my outer space laser weapon plan? No, I didn't. What is that? When everybody has plutonium, we're going to need something better. And laser weapons could be it. Here today, Pentagon tomorrow. Arthur, we have a lot of work to do. What time is it, Arthur? I can't figure out what's wrong with these clocks. Edith Ann, do you have the time? It's 11.54. Gee, that kid works long hours. Wouldn't you think in the Oval Office they'd have a clock that were? Well, tomorrow is another day.
You know, in my wildest dreams, I never thought I would be where I am today. Me, a Hollywood agent, involved in world politics, and suddenly I don't want 10% of anything. Oh, I feel like I died and went to Fantasy Island. You know, all I ever cared about was where my next Gucci loafer was coming from. You know what my idea of living was? Hot tub parties, chili at Chasen's, different actress every night, empty, empty. I mean, who would have believed it, Lil? You know? Yesterday, I, I found myself in the Rose Garden playing with a goat and a dog. I see the flag, I choke up. I check to see if things are biodegradable. This morning, I had a sudden urge to water a plant. What's come over me? You know, for the first time, that was me talking, not the studio. show you these letters from my peers. Edith, not now, honey. I'm just about to address the nation. My fellow Americans, I've been thinking, you deserve a hug. So I'm declaring today, National Give Yourself a Hug Day. We'll be kind that we'll have peace of mind. It's been a long, long time. Let's see how long it takes to give yourself a hug. Mm, that took about a second. Hug yourself, then hug a friend, then do it once again. It's been a long, long time. Say, Lil, I mean, Madam President, listen, what do you think? I would like to dress the Supreme Court, I think, in plaids. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Lunch time. I don't want to blow the budget, but I just think everybody just needs a change. Excuse me, Maggie, I don't have time for lunch, Judith. I'm so busy. I've got to finish the movie. And oh. this afternoon, I have to work on the national debt. Well, now, you're going to think better on a full stomach. But, my, look at this china already oh. chipped. Oh. You'd think Nancy'd have better sense than to put this in the dishwasher. And look at this crystal. Water spots. Disgusting. Mrs. Reagan's on her way in. I couldn't stop her. I just don't want to break up a set. Mrs. R, perhaps we could talk about some earth tones. I was thinking for the third world. I wish she'd let me wash it first. Judith, maybe we should order some Melmac. She's taking the dish! She's taking the dish! Will you look at those sweet creatures? If they can get along, why can't people? Nation demands balanced budget. Hollywood demands movie completion. Lily, have you seen the headlines of the trades? Yes, yes, I have. Washington demands balanced budget. Hollywood demands ending the movie. I'm cutting them both as fast as I can, Arthur. Lily, you have got to finish shooting the ending of this film. I don't know what I want the ending to be. I need a new concept. I I'm changing everything. Seven ages of women, adolescence, take one. She's so loose and she's so nimble with her arms and legs. The way they're destroying the environment. Someday, we're not gonna have nice beaches like this anymore. Oh. 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 The smog is hurting my eyes. Oh. The smog is hurting my eyes. Brennan, that's a take. New setup, thanks. It's good. I wonder if it's a little too on the nose. What if it is? Maybe that's just where it should be. 
Madam President? Yeah, yes, Edith. Madam President. What? I have these important papers. I'll get back to you later, Bubala. Wait. I give up. No, Mom, I promise I'm not overworked. Well, I have a few things to clean up here later tonight, but I'll get a cheese sandwich or something, Mama. Say goodnight, Mama. Mama. I'll call you back, Mama. I've just gone over your idea for the ending of the movie. Here are the figures. Arthur, are you sure? The look you want is expensive. Who is it? It's the man. Come in. Sorry I'm late. Couldn't find the place. <laughs> Here. Well, half pepperoni and peanut butter, half milk duds. It's for Edith. Sure. Well, would you deliver it? Um, I'm a little short. Do you mind charging it to the country? It'd be my pleasure, ma'am. Edith, your pizza's here. Edith, honey. Dear Lady President, this letter is to tell you that I have to give up my job as Secretary of the Future, because I have reason to believe there may not be a future. When I came here, I could hardly tell time. And now I know about the boomsday clock, and I have not slept in days. I'm getting cluster headaches. The children's aspirin cannot even put a dent in. You've been too busy with your movie and with the present to do anything about the future, so I'm running away. Goodbye. If things get better, I may come back. But in the meantime, I need some peace and quiet, so do not try to find me. P.S. I'm taking the dog and the goat with me. Love, Edith. Secretary of Future quits, whereabouts unknown. President makes urgent plea for five-year-old's return. President to make speech via satellite. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you this message from the President of the United States. Hey, Joel, come here, look at this. My fellow humans, it is no secret that I have been very upset at the resignation of Edith Ann, our Secretary of the Future. As a result, I have been doing a lot of soul searching. George Bernard Shaw said, the best reformers the world has ever seen are those who commence on themselves. Here goes. I have decided not to finish my movie. There it's out. I cannot, in good conscience, spend all that money shooting an ending to the movie that might not have worked anyway just to feed the public's appetite for escapism, when if the world were a better place, we wouldn't need to escape from it so much. So, okay, I don't have an ending, but I do have an idea for a new beginning of a new movie, and I'd like us all to be in it. And this time, you write the ending. It won't work without you. Forget that I'm the President of the United States. And just think of me as your director. It's a special effects movie. I'm not going to tell you too much about your parts. I want you to be spontaneous. Some of you will tend to overact. Try not to. Just be yourselves. I'll make it work somehow. Birth of a notion. Take one. Lights, camera, action. Okay, here we come now. You're wondering what that rumbling is. Good, good expressions. Now give me a little bit more. Oh, that's good, that's good. No, wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute. No, that's way too much. Ma Maggie, Maggie, Arthur, please. Okay, standby effect. Cue effect. Now we need some dialogue. 
Oh, uh, Mr. Tomlin, I have an idea. Yeah, yes, what is it? We'll say stop it. Of course, that's what we've needed. <laughs> Great work, everybody. Yes, very great work. We're back. And that's something we really ought to care about. And that's something we really ought to care about. And that's something we really ought to care about. That's good. I wonder if it's a little too on the nose. What if it is? Maybe that's just where it should be. Hey, lady, are you too busy to talk with me? Edith, from now on, I'm never too busy. Here's a good budget tip. You could take a red jelly bean and you could wet it just a teeny little bit and you could make lipstick. And it don't cost a dollar and you could eat it besides. And that's something we really ought to care about. It's been an absolutely unprecedented evening just ending here in Hollywood. Not only was the President of the United States awarded the highest honor for not making a movie, she was also given an Emmy for her use of the video hotline, not to mention the Nobel Peace Prize for saving the entire world. The statues were presented to Lily by her very close friend, Tommy Velour, who wore a specially designed tuxedo, mate. Oh, Phil, take me home. It's been a long career. Bill, this isn't the way home. I know, Madam President, but I like to go this way for old times' sake. I bet I know what it is. Bill, it's my stop sign, isn't it? It's something even better. Look. <laughs> Lily, are you all right? Stop it. You oh, passed sure. out for a second. Oh, Let me I, help you up. I'm okay. Thanks. I'm thanks. I think we missed it to the wet cement ceremony with Regis Philbin. Oh, I hope Regis understands. I think he will. Are you all right? I'm okay, thanks. Okay. I've got a cluster headache. Children's aspirin won't make the den in. Good night, everybody. <laughs> we love doing the show for you.
take inventory of the things that are important and precious to us in our lives. Reminds me of a song by Sister Sledge. We are family. Each of us a twig dig on the family tree. Let me hear you say we. I said we. We care about pollution, about crime, about saving the whales, about feeling bad. Offshore oil rigs are messing up the sea because they digging deeper, deeper and deeper. Ooh, even deeper than me, everybody say deeper. I said a deeper. find and it's getting harder and harder baby don't you love it when i say harder everybody say harder and deeper harder and deeper oh lord harder anyway it's going to be something like that Deeper than 